Hi folks, this is Mike from inkdependence.com and I've got a brief review for you today of Ackerman's number seven, uh, Koningena Nachblau, which is uh, apparently Queen's uh, Night Blue or Midnight Blue or uh, Blue Night, something like that. I'm not sure how the uh, hyphenation works. But anyway, uh, Koningena Night Blue. So uh, this is uh, from Ackerman, of course, and I've used up like all of it, except for this little dribble at the bottom all in pens or it's been written onto paper. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the smear right now and I'm going to have to do that by uh, just pushing some ink out of the nib with this pen because I don't have any other uh, I don't have any ink left. So uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and do this here. I've never done this on video before so hopefully it'll go all right. If it doesn't, I'll delete this and you'll never see it and so you'll never know. Boom. All right, there we go. Let's put this safely away. This is, by the way, a Franklin Kristoff uh, Panther 40, of which only a few of this design exist in the world. Uh, I have the first one. So anyway, there you go. This is a beautiful pen. Uh, get one of these if you can get your hands on it. They're fantastic. Let's see. Uh, smear this ink around here. Smear, 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 smear. Got a little bit bigger a drop than I usually get on this, uh, uh, this thing here, which is my letter opener. So I always smear with. Let's let you down over here. All right. Uh, coming in at Nakblau is a, uh, uh, it's an ink I have a hard time with because it's a little bit difficult to quantify. It's a, uh, a dark blue, sort of, uh, but uh, it's also a little bit pale in some cases. Uh, it's a little bit undersaturated, if you ask me. Uh, were I to have designed this ink, I would have made it a bit more saturated. I think it looks really nice uh, here and in this bit here, and that's from this pen which has a broad stub nib that's, uh, of course, done for Franklin Kristoff by Mike Masuyama. He does fantastic work. Uh, so uh, it's a great nib. One of my very favorites, uh, one of my very favorite pens. And uh, it does a really good job. It is uh, a good bit wetter than uh, the other nib that I used here, which is in this writing sample. And you can see a huge difference, right? So this ink uh, is the same ink, of course, but in a different pen. Ooh, oh, that's okay if I knock this over, it's empty. Whew, man. Uh, this is not where I usually do my reviews either, so, but it's such a nice day. I'm doing it in front of an open window, getting some decent light. So, uh, This is, a, uh, of course, a Lamy All-Star. It has a little bit of an inter interesting nib on it. This is the OM, the Oblique Medium, which, as uh, you can see here, has a bit of a slant. Uh, it writes kind of stub-ish a little bit. Anyway, obliques are pretty cool. I really, this is a, I think I've only got like maybe one. This might be my only oblique. I might have an Estabrook oblique around somewhere, but uh, this uh, nib is a bit drier, uh, and this ink is a little bit dry as well, I think. Uh, it's obviously, I mean, it's still wet up here uh, in this thing. Let's see if it's bled through. Uh, this is, of course, Rhodia paper, as you can see. I almost always use Rhodia paper for reviews because it's kind of great. Um, on this, with this ink, though, I think it actually looks a little bit better, maybe, on regular old paper. So if you're not a person who uses a lot of Rhodia and you use pens that are a little bit drier, like the Lamy's, uh, all of my Lamy nibs, by the way, run a little bit on the dry side. Um, I used the term anemic on here, uh, which may be unkind. I don't know. See, the problem with this ink is that while I've used all of <laughs> this entire three mil sample, except for like a little bit left in here, I and mean, you can see that there's hardly anything left in there. There's even enough to... Oh, maybe I'm out of here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, pretty much out. So anyway, you can see I use this ink quite a bit, which is why I say I'm a little bit torn on it, because... I use it a lot. I do like using it, but I don't, I don't know. I don't love the performance, I guess, with this. It isn't, it, it's an interesting looking ink, but it's, it's not going to be in my favorites, I think. Uh, but it's very cool and you may love it. So that's why I do these reviews because your mileage might vary. In any case, I do like it a lot more with the wetter nib. Uh, the issue with the wetter nib, of course, is that you're going to have more bleed through on average papers. So if you're using it in a drier nib like the Lamy, uh, then that's cool and you'll uh, still look good on this kind of paper, which is the 20 pound uh, Staples paper. You see here, this is the, uh, oh, that's the broad stub. Uh, whoa. Bollocks. Anyway, that's not the broad stub. This is the oblique medium. Let me uh, move this out of the way. You'll get a little bit of a writing sample in here. I don't know, do you, do you like writing samples with inks? Because if so, I guess I can start doing them. But uh, let's see, I got to uh, this tiny little table. Let's see, broad stub. No. Oblique. medium. All right, there we go. Um, anyway, it writes very nicely. It doesn't really have any problems starting up most of the time. If you leave it sitting around long enough, of course, it will dry out, even this guy, which has got a very nice cap seal on it. 
Uh, but you do get a little bit of dry out, so you get a little bit of a hard start, maybe. Um, but like I said, it performs very well. Uh, and on the Oblique Medium, I think it looks very nice on here. Uh, it doesn't look that great on the Rhodia, I think. It's a little too pale and it's undersaturated. But here, on the average paper, very good. Uh, of course, on the back, with the broad stub, which is this sample, you get m more uh, bleedy, spotty looking stuff. You can see spots there, you can kind of read it through. Uh, with the Lamy, like there's one spot there, what's that? Oh, that's the number, so I might have just pressed down extra hard or something. Uh, but um, yeah, no bleed or feather spread there. So, uh, my advice for this ink, if this is the one that you like, is that it looks a little bit, uh, a little bit paler on Rhodia if you're not using a wet nib. If you're using a wet nib, Rhodia, it looks awesome. I really love the way this stuff looks. Oh, yeah, look at this uh, swatch here. Very cool, right? Uh, but if you're going to use it in a drier nib, put it on average paper because it will perform better. That's just the truth. Uh, so there's that. All right, let's see uh, what this uh, looks like next to a bunch of other stuff. Let's see. Boom. All right, there's a bunch of other blues. Uh, Bungbox Omazaki C, which I've also reviewed on the blog and here on the YouTube. Uh, so go check that one out if you like. It's very cool. Uh, the, um, uh, let's see, there we go. Uh, number three, just regular old Ackerman Blau, uh, which is, um, uh, I, I have to use that more. I'm not going to review it yet. I, I think it's kind of... It's kind of too bright in the way that I think um, Sailor Souten is too bright. Uh, but anyway, we'll talk about that on that review. Uh, Seboku, which I have just started using. I kind of love it. It kind of looks like blue jeans. Look at that. Uh, Ackerman 24, which is um, Zweider Park Blaugrün, which, or Blaugru, Grau? Blaugrau? Something like that. Uh, I have to remember how to pronounce green in Dutch. Um, anyway, there's that one. Uh, American Blue, which is one of my favorite blues. So you can see why I'm not exactly sold on this number seven. Uh, given how much I love that kind of blue. They're very different, very, very different things. And then Sargasso C, which is cool. I haven't reviewed that one yet, I don't think, but I will soon. Anyway, that's it next to a bunch of other blue stuff. So, let's take a look at how it does with water. Maybe with my little inkwell water pot here. Dropping things to the ground. This is a very organized video. Pay no attention to the man behind the corner, behind the curtain. All right, so here we go, water test. Oh, I'm gonna need something to, to mop it up with. Let me see here. My headphone cable will stretch all the way over here. Okay, cool. All right, this will work. So, here we go. A little bit of water. Whoa, oh no, all the water. <laughs> uh, yep, well, trying new things. And the terrible thing is I have not taken pictures of this yet, so, uh, yikes. <laughs> You'll notice the pictures on the blog will have this water sploosh through them, because that's the way it goes. All right. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so water resistant? Actually, it could have been way worse. I haven't done the uh, the chromatography on this yet. I'll uh, add that in here uh, in a few minutes, but um, I haven't done it yet. But uh, it looks like uh, it's got some. You can still see the lines. You can still read this. This nib, unfortunately, broad of this. And so, uh, well, a lot of the blue comes up. Uh, certainly not all of it. You can certainly still read it, so that's good. Uh, anyway, we'll have the... Uh, uh, the chromatography, uh, I'll paste it in here. Okay, cool. So, you've uh, seen the chromatography, you've seen what this ink looks like, you've seen it compared to a whole bunch of other stuff. This is Ackerman uh, number seven, Koningen und Nachblau, which is a beautiful sort of, I don't know, dusky blue-ish with a little tinge of green ink uh, that works uh, well, the performance changes depending on what you use it on and in. So this is one of those ones you're going to have to judge for yourself. But I'd definitely get a sample. Uh, this sample, of course, was provided by... Uh, what did I do with my little sample vial? Oh no, it may be gone forever. Here it is. Whew, not gone forever. Of course, this is from good old Anderson Pens. Some of my favorite pen people in the whole world. Love those folks. Uh, they sent this out for review. Uh, so I didn't pay for this one, but uh, of course the opinions are always my own, as they will tell you. Uh, not everything's favorable, but this one, I'm kind of on the fence, but definitely get yourself a sample. Uh, there are three mil samples, and I think they're buck seventy-five or two bucks or something for the Ackerman ones. I'll uh, post a link in the show notes, and in the uh, you can, of course, find it on the blog. This is inkdependence.com is the blog. Uh, and uh, also, you can follow me on Instagram. I'll throw those links in there, too. I'm mi5ke on Instagram, so check me out there if you like. Uh, and tell me you came from here, because I'm always curious where people come from. So anyway, there's that. Um, the, oh, if you want to know how to su uh, support this blog, you say, you know, 
man, I've got this extra like million dollars sitting around and Mike could sure use that million dollars. Well, here's what you do. You set, go to uh, www.patreon.com uh, slash ink dependence, like independence, but with a K that signifies our dependence on ink. Uh, you will be able to uh, set up a monthly recurring donation of uh, as much as you want. Uh, that could be a dollar. Hell, it could be a million dollars. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money. It's a free world. So anyway, do that. I'll see you there. Peace out. This is Mike. This is Ink Dependence. This is Ackerman. Uh, Koning in a Nachblau. There you go. Also, thanks goes out to my buddy Boss Vandervossen for telling me how to say these things. Uh, if I've said them wrong, that's my fault and not Boss's. He definitely speaks Dutch. Anyway, peace out, y'all.